Hello, good day, and welcome to Encouragement and Prayer. I want to thank you for watching the video, sharing the video with your family and your friends, so together we can be an encouragement for others, and together we can share. We read first from John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. What one item you owe that is a special occasion or a specific purpose. That it is a part of I have a set of North Kentucky China to my grandmother. Want anything to happen to the that said. Use that child. A special occasion. Or to celebrate something with those closest to me. I want to thank you. Three years of salvation. The bypass. Justification. We are sinners. Do not want us to stop their salvation. We want to sanctify us. Sanctification. Changing us. You want us to be like Christ. Just to be a believer. You want us to be like Christ. Just. As we allow the Holy Spirit to move within us, teaching us and guiding us, live a life apart from the world, our life, our come to see Jesus, the Christ in us. In Jesus' name, Merriam Webster defines sanctification as this Growing in divine as a result of thinking after baptism, after baptism, or in the older days from the 1828 Washington, the defined sanctification as making holy, radical sense, the act of God's grace, the affection of Purified, alienated, sin, the world, and exalted to a supreme law, God, is justified from sin through salvation by Jesus Christ, crucifixion, saved Christ. Testing us through sanctification of a believer, then like Christ. A Christian, 1828 Webster a Christian is defined a disciple of Christ, believes in the truth, Christian religion, is followed. Example, pay the precepts of Christ. In Christ, characterized by real piety. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. They found him, brought him to Antioch, and for an entire year they met with the church and taught considerable numbers. And the disciples were first called. Christians in Antioch. In Antioch were, were first called Christians. Christian. A general term under Emperor Constantine became a believer <coughs> and he was baptized. Still, he wanted everyone to be a Christian. So, for attending a church, Tells the Christian. 
believer is someone who grows in the likeness of Christ, following a culture or church tradition. The Holy Spirit teaches and guides us to become like Christ. The Holy Spirit helps us to be like Christ. John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. Many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. But you will not speak on his own initiative, for whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, but he will take of mine, and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, but I have said that he takes of mine, and will disclose it to you. The King of the Holy Spirit teaches us to guide us from, from the Father through Jesus Christ. The Spirit Jesus the Son do anything the Father does not want them to do. They say it comes from the Father. The Holy Spirit guides us in. It is in Revelation. It shows to us. It guides us in understanding the Word of God. The Spirit is our helper. Holy Spirit is our teacher and he reminds us we read from God's Word. The Spirit reminds you of what you need. When you're in a situation, in your weakest, the Holy Spirit is there to give you strength. It's there if you're understanding. The Holy Spirit is there to help us pray when we do not know what to pray for. Let us read from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with our face, beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as from the Lord, the Spirit. For when you have Christ in you, you have liberty, you have freedom. Not freedom to do whatever you want, but you're free from sin. In freedom, you now can live the life that Jesus wants. With the Holy Spirit transforming us into the image of Christ. And we are to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, to constantly change us in glory. The glory is splendor, magnificence, and honor. It is God's word that sanctifies us in truth. It was Jesus' prayer the night that he was betrayed for his disciples. Jesus prayed for his disciples to be sanctified. Jesus wanted his disciples to grow in him. Let's read John chapter 1 verse 14. And the Lord became flesh and dwelt among us. We saw his glory. Glory the only begotten from the Father, for grace and truth. But Jesus is the Word. Grow in the Word, in Jesus. So let's read John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, but to me. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the truth. If you do not know Jesus, you do not know the truth. And the truth is not in you, for we are sanctified through Jesus, through his word. Let's also read John chapter 8, verse 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. But we need to continue in God's word. He's giving us his word for us to, to read and to study. But we need to be in God's word every day. Without His Word, we cannot continue to live to be sanctified, being right 
throne. Turn with me to James chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. Now if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at a natural face in a mirror. And once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But the believers are to know God's word, the Bible. We need to do what we are told in God's word. But how can you do what God tells us to do? Do not read the Bible for yourself. What's well, good that you may go to church, listen to a preacher, but it is better if you let the Holy Spirit reveal to you from God's word, justified and sanctified. It is the word of God. It reminds us who we were in sin, not to hold it as the sin against us, but we can move forward, not to still live the life of sin, but to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. So we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do dwell to pay attention to, as a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the morning star arises in your hearts. The word is our light. It shines within us, so we know what still is in our heart that does not belong. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to move and remove the simple lust of our heart. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. For it is the word of God that cuts away our sinful desires, that removes our thoughts of what we think and what to do. In sanctification, we are to go and tell others of Jesus and how we live our lives so others are able to see Christ in us and through us. And we now should not be just hearers of the word, but we are to be doers of the word. But people believe more of our actions than what we say. Is what you do is what makes you, it shapes you, and what you do others see. So do people see you, a believer, as being different? Or do they just see you as going to church? It's so living the life that you lived before, where it is our life that those who are dead in sin can see Jesus working in us. If they do not see Jesus in you, how can they receive Jesus? Well, we need to apply God's word to our life. Let's think about what Jesus prayed and what he did for his disciples. And how are you to value God's word? What do you need? The Holy Spirit to change in you for you to be more like Christ. How valuable is the Holy Spirit to you? What can you do to rely on the Holy Spirit to guide you daily? Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your love, for your desire for us to be sanctified, to be changed to the likeness of Christ. Let's be honest with ourselves to see our weakness and our and inadequacy before you and to admit our need for you and our life, not just sometimes, but always, every day, every minute of the day. We need you to just remind us of who we were and who you want us to be. And let us become more and more like Christ. As each day passes, let us not forget even one day, even one minute. Never let us stop allowing the Holy Spirit guide us and train us to be who you want us to be like. As we read your word, as we study and we meditate on it, it's not just a, a book to be read, but it is a book that guides us to live the life that we are supposed to live. A life that is holy, a life that is pure, and a life that is sinless. And let our life be a reflection of Christ in us. So through us, others will know Christ. They can see a difference in us. They are not the same as the world. Our desires are not the same as the world. 
But our desires is to be like you, to love you, to be with you, and to have the love that you have for us. Let us show that same love to those around us in our words and our deeds. And I also want to just anyone who has not been justified through the blood of Jesus Christ, that today they will be touched in their heart that they need to be justified. So you can sanctify them. Open their ears, Lord. Open their eyes to see you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give you the opportunity that you believe Christ that he came sinless, died for you, and rose from the dead. Today, you can confess your sins and ask of the things. I ask you Repeat after me as I pray. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that the separation between us is because of my sin. I confess that I have sinned and have fallen far short of your glory. I thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe that he died on the cross of I believe that you raised him from the dead. I'm sorry for my sins, and I ask you to forgive and cleanse me. I want to turn away from everything the Bible calls sin and receive Jesus as my Lord, Master, and Savior. Help me to love, serve, and obey you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to encourage you to grow in your faith. You need to read God's Word, the Bible, every day. Take time in reading it, thinking about what His Word is saying to you, and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to reveal message to you every day and every day take time in prayer talking to our he your heavenly father what's on your heart what you don't understand and take time to listen to what he has to say to you and to have fellowship with other believers who will encourage you who will strengthen you who will make you sure so you will live the life that you are supposed to live that is pure holy and I'd like to invite you to attend services with me and make our service on Sunday at 10 a.m. and again at 10 So let's attend and attend services with me. We have a part two. Thank you for watching and sharing the videos. Together, we encourage others. Together, we share the gospel. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the Encouragement and Prayer Ministries YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash at Encouragement and Prayer Ministry and share with your friends and your families so they can also be encouraged and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to Encouragement and Prayer Rumble channel at rumble.com slash c slash encouragement and prayer ministries. And share with your friends and your family so they can also be encouraged and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'd like to invite you to pick up one of our members and our Facebook group. Our address is www.facebook.com slash groups slash encouragement and prayer ministries. This group, we also have chat rooms for prayer requests and questions. So we can be an encouragement to you for you to grow in your faith, to pray for you and to pray for others. I'd like to invite you to follow us on TikTok 
at www.tiktok.com slash at encouragement and prayer. Let us be an encouragement to you. Let us share the gospel of Jesus Christ together. I'd like to invite you to follow us on Instagram for message highlights. You can find us at www.instagram.com slash E&P Ministries.